welcome. Thank you for being here with us today and joining us for another episode of the Nonprofit Show. And we are thrilled to have Josh Kligman with us, co-founder, we're going to hear about your partner, uh, here with Yearly, and to talk to us about the future of nonprofit organizations' annual reports. Before we dive into this conversation with Josh, we of course want to make sure that you know who our faces and voices are. Julia Patrick is here, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm Jarrett Ransom, hopefully your only nonprofit nerd, CEO of The Raven Group, and we are so honored to have the continued support of our amazing presenting sponsors that have allowed us to continue growing, and we have over 500 episodes. If you miss any of them, you can find them on Roku, YouTube, Amazon Fire TV, as well as Vimeo. And we are on podcasts. So if you are a podcast listener like I am, I uh, was listening to one this morning as I was walking my dog. So you can now queue up the nonprofit show on your podcast. Again, thanks to our sponsors that have really invested in us in these conversations and our guests. So Bloomerang has been with us from the beginning, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy, Nonprofit Nerd, Your Part-Time Controller, The Nonprofit Atlas, Nonprofit Thought Leader, and Staffing Boutique. Josh, we are so glad that you're here and we'd love to know a little bit about you, your co-founder, as well as Yearly. So welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. This is really exciting. Well, Julie is about to get fired because she's got she's got happy fingers over there and she's going really fast. But tell us about Yearly. What is it that, that you guys do? Well, Yearly is a platform for nonprofits to make digital annual and impact reports and a whole lot more. You know, we were uh, really noticing this need for nonprofits to find out if people are even reading any reports. There's so much time and energy and money that's put into creating reports. And we just wanna make sure that our nonprofit partners are successful when they're, they're getting them out there to stakeholders. Yeah, absolutely. At, at, you know, at the same time, my, my co-founder, Jeff Rum, had an advertising agency focused on nonprofits. And he had uh, organizations coming to him wanting to build up custom pieces of their website where they build up the code to be able to have an annual report that they can change year over year. And that's really expensive to do. Oh, and wow. you, can, you can afford it, but it's not the case for, for everyone. And we just saw the, saw the need there. You know, I, I can't imagine um, a nonprofit who embraces the process of their annual report. It just seems like everybody looks at it as just like this major, major, you know, um, burden. And then when you go into a project with that mindset, it's just disastrous, you know, and, and it just is not a good way to be thinking about this, this whole process. So you really have entered the space in, a, in the digital world. Talk about that um, and, and what you're seeing for that whole process, because this is pretty innovative for a lot of organizations and a lot of donors. Yeah, I think that the process is kind of broken into what you what you may see now and, and where it could be. And that's what we talk about with the, you know, the future of where I think digital reports could take nonprofits and associations and foundations. So today, you know, we create these reports and we don't necessarily know if they're being read and what those other metrics are, mm -hmm. such as who's reading them, how much time people are spending on the report, and the content that you're producing to, to make the report, I think is is the biggest asset, you know, your own time. So what's the, what's the return on that at the end of the day? And it's really different, I think, for every organization. Some want donations coming back in, more volunteers, whatever it might be. So how long, I was going to ask, you know, in this digital format, because I, you know, used to have, I call it a swipe file of so many annual reports, right, yeah. from, from yeah. different organizations. And as a professional fundraiser, yes, they post their donors. And I want to know who the heck is in my community that is so very generous. Um, and now that we've gone, you know, from having stacks and stacks and stacks to so many organizations now having this digital platform, and maybe you, you know the statistics, but like if you could just kind of spitball, like how many organizations actually utilize annual reports now in a digital format? Well, I know that we have 2000 organizations using the yearly platform to make reports. Most of them are annual reports, then come impact reports. And That's after true. that, we see event recaps, board 
uh, board reports, individual donor reports, and then uh, different types of digital brochures too. So it's pretty amazing the trends that we're seeing. I think I think that's really the beginning. I, you know, I see a future where in 12 to 18 months from now, um, not only will there be many, many thousands more nonprofits doing that, but um, we actually surveyed our users to see how much time and, and money they spend creating digital reports. Wow. And they say they can create the reports three times faster and save four <laughs> times the amount of money over whatever method they were using the prior year. And I thought that was fascinating. I didn't think it would be that high. <laughs> That is fascinating. And you're speaking my love language, Josh, because this is totally like super nerdy and I love it. Uh, so what are some of these marketing tools that you and Yearly really, you know, have advanced and encourage our, our um, nonprofit leaders to utilize? Can you talk to us about some of the marketing tools? Yeah, well, I think that there's ways to make um, reports, um, you know, uh, more accessible so that your stakeholders have a chance to really look at them when a piece of paper or a PDF that's a slideshow might not be as easy. So I think one of those, you know, one of those marketing tools is, you know, just utilizing the channels that you already go through, through email and social media. So if you have a, a CRM you use for your email, or you're just sending it out from your, your inbox, that's fine. And promoting your reports on Facebook, it's really easy to promote a link. A URL is all you need. And with a web-based report, people can look through it really simply. Um, organizing it in a way that tells a story is really important. I'm sure on the show, you know, in the past we've covered nonprofit storytelling, you know, a lot. A from lot. I, right? A uh, lot. <laughs> so I think that one of the greatest marketing tools you have is your own team's ability to tell stories within the report and let the community uh, that you're impacting be the lead characters in those stories mm -hmm. and showcase them, you know, and then people will really see where their money uh, went from the donations. Um, and let that shine through the reports. You know, we are in this time of, of tremendous change for many reasons. And, and one of the things that I think is a comfortable way to push back on anything digital is for development teams or, or nonprofit leadership to say, yeah, but our donors are older and they're not tech savvy. And so we need to do a hybrid or we're not ready yet. And I'm wondering, I think that's wrong, by the way. I think that's wrong. But how do you counter that commentary or that argument for not embracing a digital piece? Well, sometimes it's true. And I saw an organization in New Orleans and in Las Vegas, speaking of Las Vegas, um, try to ease into digital reports by sending out a jumbo postcard that went to all their donors that said, we've gone digital and had the URL and a QR code on there uh -huh. to drive people towards the website. And I think it's a way over time of training your donors and all your stakeholders really that you're now on the web with a digital report. Mm -hmm. and that lets them know what you're up to now. I think that's a nice transition. Right. That is a I, great transition. I love that. It seems so simple. You know, I mean, it cuts the cost down so much, mm -hmm. um, you know, to send a postcard instead of, I don't know, 12, 18, 24 page, you know, and a report and, and how that looks. How do you speak to the, you know, the digital space when we have, you know, readers of different language, or maybe they need larger font, or, you know, like, how does the, the online, the digital platform allow for those conveniences? Well, I am uh, not the most tech savvy person, and I'm not a graphic designer. So when we created Yearly as an option, we wanted our platform to be so simple to use that anyone can use it without having any of those experiences. So it's a no code, no graphic designer background needed to be able to do things just like you do in email or Microsoft Word and make fonts larger, um, you know, have uh, a report that's really letting graphics lead the way too. So if you have existing infographics or great photography, I think those are things you can implement into your report to make it a little more user friendly. Mm -hmm. And I think testing your reports with your colleagues on your computer, on a mobile device are great ways for you to see what your stakeholders are gonna see before they get it and share that around rather than just launch it out there, especially if it's your first time. Right, right. You know, I'm, I'm fascinated by this because I'm wondering um, in terms of making these investments or changing, are you having, um, are you seeing organizations that have 
maybe a group really pushing it that's saying, yeah, we want to go digital. And then you might have another side within that same organization being a little hesitant or where do you see the window of this being half open, fully open? I see, I see the window being mo mostly open because those conversations have been happening for several years. I mean, I started to have them with colleagues five or six years ago, and we knew we wanted to go, go digital with reports, but we never really knew what that meant. So yeah. the options, what are you supposed to do? Um, I think once people learn what the options are, it's a good time to test. And that's where I'm seeing a lot of nonprofits go and say, let's try this for a year and then we'll see uh, what the response is like. So tracking that response, I think is a big, a big and smart part of it. How do we sell it to the naysayers, right? How do we sell it to the people that say, I know our constituents, I know that they like to have it like a coffee table book and they pick it up and they do that whole like, you know, thing and they, they just sit there and read it, you know, like how do we make that transition from having that experience to a postcard that says we've gone digital uh, for, for so many, because I can only right now think about the pushback we've had in fundraising when online auctions took yeah. place. <laughs> and now we're talking about an online annual report. So what do we say to this? I love the data that you, you were like, try it, analyze it, measure the success. What are some other, I don't know, key topics that we should be sharing? I think it's that old 80-20 rule. And I think the majority of your audience is going to be really interested in a digital report. Okay. And you can try it. Now, for the ones that you know, you need to hold it. For that one board member, that sw small segment of your, your donor list, mm -hmm. if you printed a thousand total reports last year, and uh, this year you're going digital, go print 100. Save 90% of your printing cost mm -hmm. if that's something that you have to do for your organization and get it in their hands, but also let that audience know that it's online as well and take a look at what their, their usage is like that. If you take a yearly report, for instance, and sync it up to your Google Analytics, you could see where people are coming from, how much time they're spending the, wow. reading the reports. You'll have your answers to that, Jared. You'll know, you'll say last year, well, yeah, we printed it, but we don't know if you people know? are reading it. Now we know the average person spent 18 minutes and 30 seconds reading it. You'll have your answers really quickly. Here's how long they stayed. Here's their click throughs. Here's what they were really interested in. Oh, you just got super juicy because now we can take that into our database and really start to categorize and segment based off of motivation and interest. Um, and I also feel that we could, you know, I, I learned from someone on the show, I won't name names, but it's not you, Josh, that, <laughs> that taught us, you know, taught me, you don't do anything with one sole purpose, right? So I'm assuming you can use these client stories, success stories, perhaps in blogs or articles. And, and again, there's so many ways to repackage and repurpose the content of this. So what you just said was golden. Yeah. I'm, qu I'm questioning too, uh, when you say about, you know, getting a hundred or even 50, whatever copies off, um, does yearly allow you to use the files that you're creating on the digital side to do a print option? You know, it's funny you asked that, Julia, because I think I was dead set against it for the last 18 months because I said, <laughs> no, the future is digital. It needs to be a website. Every single day, somebody has asked me that question. <laughs> and we actually launched that, we launched that feature because there's, there's a need for it, I think, because of the transition that we're talking about here over to digital that takes a little time and um, even first movers in the nonprofit space want to have that option to convert a web-based report into a, a PDF and it works. And the interesting thing is you may not want to have some of the more engaging or interactive elements in your PDF and you just strip those out. It's a few clicks of a button. And well, your quota is filled for the day, so nobody else can ask you that question today, Josh. <laughs> Julia, Julia's handled It is that. one a day. I don't want more than one. We built it. It's out there. <laughs> Let's I love it. Deeper into interactive interactivity. You just mentioned that, although it was easier for you to say than me. But let's talk <laughs> about making these annual reports yeah. a little more interactive. Um, what does this even look like? What are our possibilities? I mean, you're competing for your, your donor and your volunteer and your board member's time when they're reading their report with 
their phone dinging, their doorbell ringing like mine did, their dog barking, something <laughs> else happening, right? So you only have a small window of time to really capture their attention, engage them more with your, with your brand than the last touch point. So I think there's things you could do within the storytelling to help complement the writing and the photos that you'd have in there that would make a nonprofit and your report more engaging and more interactive. So on the engaging side, I think it's social media. You could be talking about a program that you created that puts a playground in your community and the story may be about the kids that you're affecting on that playground. Mm -hmm. Well, what if there was a social media post that you had four months ago about that playground that your organization installed that's starring one of the kids that's using it and benefiting, benefiting from it. You can go to Facebook if that's where your post was and just click the embed button, which is hidden in these little three dots on the top right of all the posts and copy that and paste it right into your report. So it lives with the photo and the text that you're writing about your report. So I think it, it, it makes the report come alive a little bit. Yeah, and that's on the engaging side. Interactive, I think is more about, um, is more about uh, uh, video because I think that becomes more of a, a, a two-way um, communication within the report. You can click play and watch videos along the same lines. You know, it's funny, we even saw a video from a school in the Northeast that was welcoming people to the report instead of an introductory letter from the president or executive director. Great. That was I, really cool, yeah. Yeah, great idea. I mean, if you're gonna embrace it, go ahead and, you know, really drink the Kool-Aid and, and demonstrate it. And you could even talk in that welcome um, idea, like how you use it, mm -hmm. right? I'm just, you know, yep. like, you know, this is this is the process. Um, you mentioned something and I, and I, when we first got going and I'm really intrigued by this, are you seeing folks that use this tool just for the um, annual report then saying, holy moly, we could do a stakeholder report or we could do other reports or a state or of the union? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, are you seeing them like use the, the oh, technology okay. to then act as one of their main communication voices? Yeah, I am. And they're coming up with use cases I couldn't dream of, which is really nice. Um, I think it was the Catholic Community Foundation of New Orleans created an annual report. And then they said, wait a second, we have this digital brochure we need to make to highlight one of our programs that sells wills and trusts. So they went and used that or uh, the Montgomery County Family Services Office in Maryland outside DC is doing um, a monthly newsletter to you know employees. So I think there's all types of um, all types of reports like that that are getting created, which are nice to see because there is use for it year round. I mean, if you can click the duplicate button and take your template that you already made and make all these other reports, I think you'll just have a really easy communication channel that reaches out to certain stakeholders um, in a way that you're probably doing already through other you know, other means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what not, is this? go ahead, Julia. Well, I have one more tech question. Um, yeah. So um, you started off by saying, you know, nonprofits would have to, to basically use consultants and offboard this so that they could get the technological, you know, interest and savvy for somebody to produce this. But you're maintaining that a normal team could do this themselves or are you advocating that they're still going to have to find that service provider that can interface with with your technology you if, if i can do it you know <laughs> you can do it trust me so anybody can anybody can do it um you know because i think what we've seen with these kind of self-serve platforms over the years you know even outside of the nonprofit world it's just these easy ways to create um you know, really nice looking polished creative pieces, right? Um, all by ourselves. And that's, you know, that's really where Yearly's at because we wanna be able to save nonprofits time. I mean, we actually have a mission to help put that time and focus and energy, you know, a, li a little less off annual reports because it's such a burden. And we've, we've yeah. personally been there back into, back into the community impact best we can. Um, so I think that's, I th you know, I think that's something that's helpful. And that's actually my question was, what does it look like to work with yearly and kind of that ramp up time from yeah. we say, okay, Josh, we're sold, we're drinking the Kool-Aid, we're all in, man, how do we do this? What does that time look like? I mean, what we typically see is nonprofits trying it and seeing what it looks like. So they go to the website yearly.report and they play around and see the vision of what their report could look like and 
then they get going from there with uh, with our services. So are I you think saying, that, I'm going to interrupt you and I, I apologize. Sure. Are you saying we can try that out for free? You could try it for free. And then when okay. you're ready to, when you're ready to actually publish it, you know, that's, that's when we charge. I mean, Got it. All so the, it's, all like, the... it's like, you know, purchasing some paint swatches before you paint your whole damn house. It's really like, is this the paint that I want? Is this what it's going to look like? So I love that yearly offers that to say, Hey, try it out. See what you think. See how, how easy it is. Um, that's, that's brilliant. What were you going to say? Because I, I wanted to make sure that, that we understood that properly. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, when I was in nonprofit marketing, I think there were a lot of services that I explored, but I didn't necessarily have a chance to try them or really fully understood what they are. So yes. I think that's important. I think that the content writing of a report um, for those watching and listening that have done this be before know uh, what that time frame is like and that, mm -hmm. you know, you really need, um, you know, at least four weeks. I mean, I worked on it for months at the organization I, I, I was with to really oh, yeah. own, own a comprehensive report. But if you're just getting going for the first time, I, I'd say find the stories of impact that you already have out there and then incorporate those into the report. And you can really do it throughout the year. And then you don't have to cram everything into the last month before you want to go and push a report out there and hit the publish That's button. Great. That's great. Um, Really this has been fascinating. Yeah. I know I am going to visit the website. Uh, let's pull up Josh's information so that if anyone also wants to take this site for a test drive, I think that's really important to do. Uh, Yearly.report, co-founder Josh Kligman. You know, tell us, what do you see the future? Because you alluded that. to maybe having a crystal ball. <laughs> Where do you see these yearly and annual reports going uh, now in this digital space? And even in, as you said earlier, like oh, the next 12 to 18 months, what are some of the new trends that we're going to see? Yeah, well, I was going to bring the crystal ball here to, to, to the show, but I, le I left it at home. So unfortunately, yeah. I'm not going okay. to But you are at home. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's in the other room. We'll say that. Okay, okay. Fair, fair I, enough. I think that um, I think that, like you said, uh, in 12 to 18 months, we're going to see a big lift in terms of the number of nonprofits of all sizes, um, because we see non you know we see small nonprofits with budgets you know under under a half million dollars to you know World Wildlife Fund and Harvard University creating digital reports. Um, so we'll see more annual reports, but we'll see more everyday reports as well. I mean, yeah. what Harvard did was they did a report on uh, from the Center of African Studies on their campus, a report on where alumni were landing throughout Harvard and the impact they were making, right? So that's not, that's a story of impact, but it's not for the whole school. It's getting really specific and targeting a, a certain audience, I'm sure. I think Cornell University did something similar on food and agriculture just in the state of New York. Yeah. And I, I think we're going to see more reports looking like websites because mm -hmm. it's easier to do, but it looks much better because nonprofits are gonna get a better reaction from their stakeholders. So that's where I see the future going and further away from um, print where you can get away from, it, where you can get away with it. Right, right, I love it. Well, this has been really interesting and, and um, it just dovetails, don't you think, Jarrett, to all the other digital things we've been talking about. like working with your donors digitally, you know, embracing the story of impact in a digital component, understanding that you can have a digital footprint and relationship that grows and not like so many nonprofits thought, oh, the pandemic, we can't be out. So we have to hit the pause button. And that, that pause button grew bigger and bigger and bigger until well, it's like a pause paddle, you know, <laughs> Um, so it's really an interesting thing to uh, have you on, Josh, to talk about this. I would say in 500 episodes, you know, we've had people talk about um, their annual reports in just a very cursory manner. And generally, it's not very flattering. <laughs> it's like one of those things that they're like, ah, you know, we hate doing it, right? Such a bad attitude for something that can be such a huge marketing tool, I think. That's true. And what you just said is going to be my next commercial. So I'm glad this is being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> well, well you, you know, yeah, I didn't mean it to sound that way, but it's, it no, is no, really, I, you're, it's you're, really you're true. Right. I think it. 
No, 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 you're right because um, it is a huge uh, pain point and something that I always tried to put off for as long as I could. So that's why we started yearly so we can try to e ease that pain. And we, we've been there, we've created them, it's, it's hard. It's, it's overwhelming. It's a project. It's, it's quite an undertaking. So kudos to you for, you know, co-founding yearly, providing the solution, offering a test drive so that we can say, Hey, yeah, let's do try this out and see if this is going to work for us. And then consider how else might we use this platform, right? Cause it's endless. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Josh, thank you so much for being with us today. You know, we warned you before we came on live, it would go by fast and it has gone by fast. For those of you who might be new to the nonprofit show, I'm Julia Patrick. I've been joined today and every day with the nonprofit nerd herself, Jarrett Ransom, CEO of the Raven Group. We want to make sure that we thank and honor the people that make this show possible. Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, the nonprofit nerd, fundraising academy, the nonprofit out atlas, Nonprofit Thought Leader and Staffing Boutique. We're really, really fortunate that we have had these folks uh, stand by and support us now going into year three. Um, what was really a two week project at the start of the pandemic has blossomed into something that is uh, continued on. And so we wanna make sure that we thank all of those people. And we um, wanna Good thank- work. When Stephen Shattuck at Bloomerang was like, happy March 279. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, he did. Stephen Shattuck, oh my gosh, one of the champions of our sector. And I was thinking about Stephen Shattuck yesterday because um, where we live in Arizona, it was Arizona Gives Day. And Stephen has a fabulous, fabulous routine that he goes through. Uh, every year uh, with Giving Tuesday. And so, which we get him to report on every year. He comes back and does a special episode. But hey, as we end this episode and we thank our guests today, we want to remind everyone to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow.